one and all, and welcome to Seen Through Glass. Now, if you're a regular viewer, you're probably a bit surprised by the car lurking over my shoulder, because historically, I haven't been the biggest Lamborghini fan. But, the last couple of years, that's started to change. I've started to appreciate Lambos a little bit more, especially the baby Lambos. The Gallardo, and now, of course, the Huracan. That's because whilst the rest of the world's supercar manufacturers start to spread themselves a bit thin, maybe make their cars a little bit more generic slash bland, I really like the fact that Lamborghini feel like they're staying true to themselves. They don't make many models, the Huracan, the Eventstor, and the Urus, and their supercars still have honking great naturally aspirated engines in and are fairly compromised, as I think all true supercars maybe should be. And you'll all know, that's a Huracan STO. And you simply don't get a more compromised supercar than that. Actually, I'm gonna go one step further and say I think that car is completely pointless, but in the best way possible. STO, Super Trofeo Omologato. I'm sure you knew that, but essentially, this is the most hardcore hurricane we've seen to date. It's actually not the first time that Lamborghini have claimed to make a kind of road legal version of their V10 race car. For the Gallardo generation, we got the Super Trofeo Stradale, the STS instead of the STO, and the Squadra Corsa, which I actually drove recently in Canada. But it's the first time we've seen that kind of recipe or formula applied to the Huracan, and I would say this is far more extreme than the Gallardo iterations. I mean, just look at this thing. It looks like a Hot Wheels car. If you showed this to a 10-year-old, their brain would explode. And I think that's fantastic. Not because I've got something against kids. Kids are great. But shouldn't all supercars garner that kind of reaction? It's also great because, well, the STO is not exactly revolutionary. It's essentially a Huracan Evo rear-wheel drive with a little bit of race car trickery, some weight removed and a few other special bits on it. We've still got that iconic V10 engine putting out around 630 horsepower to the rear wheels, but like I just mentioned, that's nothing new for the Huracan. So the way this thing looks is super important. Okay, some of it is functional aero. Not all of it, but we can look past that because, well, yeah, it's just mad. It's so out there, it's ostentatious, it's insane. It does look like a race car for the road or something you'd expect to see on the front cover of Max Power if it was still going in 2030. It's futuristic, it's bold. I just want to applaud it. Bravo, Lamborghini! Inside, the brilliant ridiculousness continues. Uh, let's start with the seats. Some of the most uncomfortable I've ever experienced. I've never really got on with Lamborghini seats. I'm six foot two and I just don't feel like they're made for me. But these ones, particularly bad. Uh, it took me about an hour to get to this spot this morning and yeah, my back already hurts. I mean, they do move, they move, but nothing I do seems to fix the problem. Uh, next up, visibility. Pretty shocking uh, because of the very cool serrated engine cover and the even cooler titanium roll cage. Rear view mirror, totally pointless. I, I can't see anything. Can just see metal, really. Even the side view mirrors, no matter how I position them, just seem to be full of big rear wing and flared wheel arches. And then the Huracan has a pretty aggressive letterbox style windscreen. So yeah, you, you're just looking forward, but maybe that's the most important thing to do when you're in an STO. And then finally, Lack of space. I mean, it's a confined cabin, but I'm talking about luggage space. No boot in this car. So anything you're bringing with you is ending up in here. That's fine for me today because I don't have a passenger. So I've got my stuff just here on the passenger seat. But if I was in central London and I wanted to stop and run into a shop, this is getting stolen in about five minutes because, well, you can just look into this car and people will because it's a Huracan STO. And yeah, they're just going to grab that. So. Really, all you can bring is your phone, your wallet, and the car key. And if you bought this car for practicality, well, you bought the wrong car and maybe you're a little bit mad. Because let's face it, this car is all about having fun.
honest, it's pretty easy to have fun in this car. It is absolutely berserk. Oh, forgive me if I don't talk for a second. My brain is still getting used to the abilities of this thing. The ride is so firm. You just feel absolutely everything that's going on underneath you, which of course is a good thing, but also quite an intense thing. And at the moment, the car is driving me. I am not driving the car, which is never a good situation to be in when you've got 630 horsepower under your right foot. But oh, the turning is just unreal. And, oh. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the hesitance on traction. Things are not warm. And with any car like this, you've really got to heat things up before you start cracking on. So I'm taking it pretty tame. But the gear shifts, the noise, it's super intense, but so exhilarating. Oh my gosh. Those brakes. I don't think I've ever experienced brakes like that. Okay, they are also still cold, so a bit grabby. But good Lord, I was barely touching them there and they were hunkering on. <laughs> this thing is so mad in such a good way. Do I want to drive it 10 hours to France? Definitely not. But give me a road like this. Give me 30 or 45 minutes where I can get in it, drive it, get out and never see it again. There's not much better. I mean, this is just... There's actually not a road, oh my lord, good enough to really show off the potential of this thing. Definitely not in the UK. Oh, those brakes. They're too much, <laughs> but they're just so impressive. Yeah, yeah, speechless. Spe blown away speechless. I, I just want to keep going. I want to get confident with the car so I can really attack the road with it. But as I was just saying, it's too accomplished for the road. It's too, no corner could you take at a fast enough speed on the public road to go, oh wow, this thing really is special. You have to be on the track. And the problem is, as Shmi150 and many people have pointed out, you're actually not allowed on most tracks in this thing. It's too noisy. I mean, I hope you can hear me. It's noisy in here. It is super noisy out there, trust me. But look at this little Eau Rouge type complex. The car is on rails. There is so much grip and so much confidence through the steering wheel, through the chassis. Oh. Yes, this is glorious. And genuinely, I'm driving it like 30, maximum 40% of this car's ability. I'm taking it so easy. Okay, right, calm down, Sam. That, that was my first properly quick and aggressive, aggressive drive of the day. And, it's a lot, it's a lot to compute. So, let's take a break. I'm actually on my way today to Podium, home of Perla, who make the seen through glass coffee. Um, I'm actually gonna be doing some work with them for the rest of the year, and we've got some meetings about that. We're also gonna be filming some stuff. And interestingly, I know at Podium, they've got a Mark I Gallardo Superleggera for sale. Kind of where this whole lightweight V10 Lambo ethos began. So it might be quite interesting to spend some time with that car, a car that I love, and kind of compare it and see over the last 15, 16 years, just, just what the development of these insane Lambos has been. <laughs> this thing is just outrageous. <laughs>
Well, it's a few hours later. It's been an exceptionally busy day down here at Podium, filming for the upcoming Podium YouTube channel. Watch this space, watch this. Watch out for that. <laughs> I don't know how to promote it, but anyway, watch, watch out for that. Um, anyway, as I teased, look behind me. 14 years of development for the lightweight, stripped out, track focused baby Lambo. Because yes, here we go, next to the STO, the Mark I Gallardo Superleggera from 2008, 2022, 2008, 14 years, I think I've done my maths correct, between these two cars. Uh, Long-term views of this channel will know I've got a bit of a crush on the Mark I Gallardo Superleggera. The Mark I Gallardo was a, was a supercar when I was growing up, so I've always kind of, well, just had a soft spot for it. And because I like intense, extreme, track-focused supercars, hence my excitement for the STO, this thing I just always, yeah, have kept an eye on. Here it is in all black, looking kind of amazing, but quite basic honestly i mean obviously back in the day this was super impressive but you look at it now basically all you got was a lovely carbon fiber rear wing a slightly stripped out interior some more carbon fiber dotted around some lightweight wheels and that was kind of it off you went nothing that crazy where as we've discussed today this thing is just absolutely ridiculous looking not all of it as i keep saying super purposeful but it's there and it just looks completely manic so yeah this now i think doesn't look 14 years older than an STO. It looks 30 years old. It's like a Countach versus an Aventador. Absolutely mad. Now, if I was to choose one of these cars to live with, day in, day out, to actually own, yes, it would still be this. But like maybe you got an idea of just a moment ago when I had my first exhilarating drive in the STO, as a car to jump in and drive down a B road for 30 minutes, that's the one I'm choosing because it's just ridiculous exhilaration. But it's then obviously let down in so many other ways. So yes, right now, I'm happy that I'm gonna be driving away in this and enjoying it in this beautiful sunshine that's appeared. But still, these things are very special and often overlooked. Before we go, we have to do the ultimate supercar test. No, we're not gonna drive these back to back. We're gonna do a rev battle because of course, whilst they are separated by 14 odd years, they have very similar V10 engines. And this does actually sound incredibly good for a 2022 supercar. I'm not really sure if Lambo have got the necessary or the required filters on that exhaust system because it's so noisy. But this is extremely noisy because not only is it a car from 2008, which will always sound louder, than a modern car. It's got a straight through exhaust pipe. So yes, there we go. I said it, it's classic YouTube. We've got a rev battle. I mean, I think we've got a clear winner. I, I can't hear anything, <laughs> this sounds good. I mean, to be fair though, for a 2022 car, that STO is nuts. This is where Lambo life isn't fantastic. <laughs> I just left podium, trying to find a nice quiet road to enjoy a sunset drive on come head on with a massive tractor. <laughs> and I was like, right. So I'm now trying to reverse up this lane and I've got a Tesco's delivery truck behind me. So yeah, interesting. Visibility in this car, hmm, being put to the test. <laughs> it is the problem, genuinely, with this car, is there aren't many places in this country where you can drive it. It's too much, there's too much going on. It's too much performance, too much capabilities. I wanna go and stretch its legs and enjoy it, but it's just not gonna happen. Right, Tesco's man, what are you doing? I'm gonna give up on this road. Let's hope no one comes crashing into me now because this car is expensive. One minute, one minute tractor man, one minute. Thank you, thank you, okay. Oh, oh. We've escaped that, but all I wanna do is have fun in this thing. I'm just having to be so cautious and careful because English roads are bumpy and tight and twisty and lots of oncoming traffic and yeah, 
I need to be in Switzerland or Germany, somewhere that I can really push this thing, or out on the track. I do feel like a real hooligan driving this car though. Felt like daily driven exotics filming Lamborghini rev battles and random car parks. It's so not me, but in a kind of good and fun and exciting way. And I like that this car brings out a different side of me. It's like when you meet a new girlfriend, and you're like, oh, I've never been into leather, but let's give it a go. But if we're serious about it, as fun, as silly, as mad as this car is, it's clearly too compromised because if you look at the used market, unlike similar Ferrari, Porsche, McLarens, there's quite a few of them on the used market suggesting people have got them and gone, yeah, I can't live with this. Because the ride is firm, there is no practicality. It is ridiculous, it is ostentatious, it is out there. As a toy, if I had a collection, would this be in it? Quite possibly. And I'm gonna make the huge claim that this is my favorite Lamborghini I've ever driven. But at the same time, I can't wait to get out of it. <laughs> and I don't really want to own it. And I wouldn't buy it over the equivalent Ferrari, Porsche, or even McLaren. But it's very cool. And as like a hurrah to a dying breed of supercar, it doesn't get much better. I just think the world's moved on. We've all got too used to our supercars being able to do too much. And a fairly blunt and basic instrument like this is probably too extreme for most people. But I think it's absolutely glorious. So I'm gonna try and enjoy this drive home. And at some point, I'll find a motorway and cruise on home and give this car back. Probably be quite happy about it. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you have, and make sure you stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come.